first off is the O Gundam Type ACD, and um, what can I say? Um, it's a very solid kit. It has very strong RX-78-2 inspired designs on it. I mean, from the way the torso is designed to the simple look of these limbs, the arms and the legs. Um, very basic, but some. But I mean, that's not a bad thing. I mean, more is not always better. Um, but it still does have a lot of o, double O Gundam style, or should I say Gundam double O inspired designs from the torso fins to the GN condenser sphere there. But I mean, it's odd, uh, but anyone can pro who, uh, who's ever seen the RX-72, I mean RX-78-2 will, you know, see, hey, you know, this looks very similar, practically the same thing, almost, it's just newer. Um, but moving on, it's, uh, like I said, it's straight build wise, it's a very solid kit. Um, you, there's almost nothing you have to do. I mean, if someone was to do a street build, it looks pretty great as is. Um, let's see. Besides some panel lining here and there, um, there's really not much to do. The most heavy panel lining I encountered was on the head, of course. It's always the head. Um, plus, you know, I I don't like stickers. I, I don't like uh, I like decals, but I don't like the stickers. So of course, I have to paint the eyes. I got to make everything hard for myself. Huh. Um, the GN condenser, the uh, I mean GN condenser. I did do clear green over silver, like most people, and uh, the red vents, uh, you know, clear red over silver, you know. Um, but that's really not necessary because it really it, they're just slight accents. They don't show up that heavily on the suit, so I mean that's really not necessary. There is of course gray here on the lower knee and um, gray in between on the f on the feet here. Um, oh, and on the shoulder. Of course, all these are just you know if you're like me. You know, you you just have a somewhat meticulous uh, eye for some detail sometimes, and you can't be uh, satisfied with the straight build, unfortunately. I used to do a whole bunch of straight builds, and of course now I... And then once I started do, uh, painting a little bit, now I, I can't help it. <laughs> so now, unfortunately, I can't just have, have a good time just doing a straight build. I wish I could, but um, I find it more enjoyable in the end, though. However, putting a little bit more effort and time into putting some of those slight accents. So it's kind of nice. Um... But moving on to articulation, right? Articulation has a great full range of motion on the shoulders, has inner ball jointed shoulder, which is really great, um, bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, um, no touching uh, shoulder, but pretty close, wiggling arm, wiggling hands. Uh, let's see, uh, the, uh, the neck is actually double ball jointed, just like the double o, the o, the double o Gundam, so it can have a head bobbing notion. Uh, so it's kind of so that's pretty cool. Great for the angry Gundam look or the you know, fierce look or uh, looking up even. Um, the torso has a very very awesome uh, sw waist uh, swivel and ball jointed uh, and ball jointed uh, for for I guess that long back arc or leaning forward look. So really great. Skirt armor pretty standard you know. Um, individual uh, front skirt armor if you cut the piece. Um, and of course, uh, the uh, side skirts uh, can move around, you know, they're on ball joints. Um, however, there's something to be noted. These ball joints are on ball, um, I'm sorry, the uh, side skirts are on ball joints. Um, I'd advise them um, if you, ha if you ha think that yours might be loose, because uh, they're not covered up or anything by the, uh, lower, by the lower waist or um, lower torso. They're kind of exposed, so they're just in a ball joint, so I can see them by chance getting loose if someone, if uh, time allows, through pose wear, play wear, or what have you. I put some paint or some super glue in either the notch or the peg, um, the ball joint itself to uh, add more friction so it, the joints are a little tighter. Um, same thing applies, like my, my front skirts, they're somewhat holding, but they start, they're starting to feel a little loose, so I'm gonna have to do that soon. Leg, uh, the leg, but that's the only thing I have, of course, as far as articulation wise, really. Um, the legs, you know, can pull, can, uh, legs are pretty much, uh, awesome, you know, f full splits if it allows. Uh, thigh swivel, uh, double knee, uh, double knee bend, pretty much flush, really cool. Ankle has this kind of, uh, peg and post and ball jointed thing going on, so it has a, uh, double jointed ankle, so that's really cool. Um, although with, the uh, Unfortunately, I mean, if they really wanted to, they could, they totally could have made a few more pieces for the ankle for another peg and post for a, uh, for a toe bend, which would have been really awesome, but, um, I'm, ju I'm just really nitpicking, aren't I? <laughs> um, ankle guard is on ball joints, um, 
it's very tight. It does not impede the foot or the lower le lower leg, shin armor whatsoever. Um, oh, as you can see here, I went ahead and uh, added a little bit more detailing on the foot as well. Uh, really not necessary, of course, but like I said, I'm a stickler these days now. Uh, I'll never enjoy a street build. Such a shame. <laughs> um, besides, but articulation wise, as you can see, it's um, there should be no reason why anyone can't pull off any poses they want to, you know. So it's really awesome that way. Our sex accessories wise, um, sh it comes with a shield, uh, alternative back unit. Um, you can be lass or you can be ribbons. <laughs> uh, and of course, it's a small beam rifle and of course beam parts. The actual the kit itself comes with two beam parts, so you can um, have two beam sabers, one for XA R2, and uh, one for Oaken, so you can uh, reenact the uh, the uh, scene on the box art. I don't have XR2, I have XA, so I didn't really find the need to. Um, so that's a re really cool of Bandai to do. And uh, later with all the uh, Bandai rehashing of all the uh, money-making rehashing of the double kits, that's one nice thing to be said at least. At least they have added little nice things, perks like that, so that's cool. Oh, if I didn't mention, also standard double you know, I guess wiggling waist and stuff, so that's also if we're on underneath individual separate from the skirt armor, so that's cool too. Um, but right, you can be lass or you can be ribbons. Simple peg and post, just pull out like so, and just plug it in, and that's it. Uh, you can panel line the gene drive, or you can go ahead and just uh, color green. I I like to color mine green. <laughs> uh, also, um, side note, if anybody ever wants to, if you ever want to modify your uh, your gene drives to look a little bit more accurate, because uh, some of the gene drives I noticed sometimes they don't look as accurate as they could be, simply buying some um, some I guess square veneers from your look from your local online hobby pro hobby parts or hobby shop provider or even in your hobby shops you might find it actually and you can add it on similar to like some people have done to the double kits looks really nice great little accent um, but back to accessories I'm sorry um, shield good shield has articulated uh, articulated little I guess mount but downside it it doesn't actually mount via the arm anyway, so um, also another friction-related mounting part. So that could be bad due to, like I said, pose wear or play wear. So, but only time will tell. And it's also um, it can be posed on both sides of the on both arms, but I believe from what it looks like to me, it looks like it's more of a left arm-oriented shield. The beam rifle, or I guess it's a beam rifle. It's kind of it, it's a little small for a beam rifle. Maybe it's a hand beam cannon kind of thing. But um at least on mine it who's calling me now? Uh at least on mine it's a little bit small on the handle, so unfortunately it's not as tight. Maybe some and I don't know if super glue or friction would really help it. I suppose it would help a little, but it really wiggles in there on mine. So it can really fall out. So hopefully maybe maybe it was just my kit. Um oh there you go, see? Um, but that's why I gave him an addition. I gave him my old broken Curiosis, uh gun as well. So, I mean, hey, he's not alone. Um, on the contrary, however, the beam rifle, uh, the uh, beam saber, however, is really great. Um, fits in great. Uh, beam part itself is on a rectangular peg, not a round peg. So, you it'll make it easier for people so that maybe they don't twist and break theirs off if it's too tight or anything. So, that's really nice. But it fits in really snug, does not fall whatsoever. You know, and um, as far as posing, like I said, um, this kit is really, really solid. Um, I'd highly recommend it to anybody, especially if you like the O Gundam designs itself, or the uh, dub, dub, uh, Gundam Double O, or even the Arc 72, uh, sorry, Arc 78 2. Why do I keep saying that? <laughs> um, however, if you want a really nice looking um, GN drive, I guess, piece, the uh, the O Gundam, the one with the relic colors and the PET parts, the big you know G and particle wings, that that G and drive is really awesome. It has multiple parts. It's it's comprised of like I think two or three parts. So it has that you know lifted sculpt on it. So great to paint, great looking. It's really awesome looking. But not that there's anything wrong with the uh, standard one because I mean. I mean, I like it all the same, but I just thought that was really cool that, you know, one little part to have so many additional pieces for detailing and stuff, so 
that's really cool. But um, that's enough about the O Gundam. Um, next part will be uh, the Arc 78-2, the Gundam 30th edition. All right, we'll see you at that next one.